Well, I love traveling, you know, and I love seeing, you know, different parts of the world. So, and I've been, over the years, I've been almost everywhere. China, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Australia, South Africa, and then all over Europe, you know, like everywhere in Europe. So, but I haven't been to Romania yet, and I've been wanting to go. Tattoo Now has been helping connect tattoo collectors and the curious with world-class talent from all around the globe since the mid-90s. You are invited to join us as we dive into the heart of tattoo now. Welcome. Thank you very much for watching. And thanks to our sponsors for making this show possible. And in this case, extra special thanks to Costi from Next Level Tattoos for bringing us over to the 10th Annual Bucharest Tattoo Convention. So we'll be packing up all of our gear to get head over there to help you dive into the spirit of uh, Eastern European tattooing. Although the artist lineup is worldwide. This is the perfect opportunity for us to Skype in with our good friend Bob Tyrell. He talks about tattooing in Detroit and in Los Angeles and the amazing road trips that you can take in between. I think he's done it in two days solo. Crazy. Um, I'd like to give that a shot too. I'm pretty excited to meet Robert Hernandez over at the Bucharest convention. So we talked to Bob a little bit about when he, uh, when he met Robert and, and how he got tattooed by him. Bob talks about his influences, including Rick Baker, the monster special effects guru, his musical inspirations, and, and including what it's like to be uh, rocking out on stage with, with some of his favorite you know, bands. And then we cover Bob's upcoming tour schedule, so no matter where you are in the world, uh, you could have a chance maybe to get tattooed by the master. These videos are possible because of our sponsors, including d -Lies Pro, a protective film uh, made specifically to heal tattoos. Alex DePasse is at the helm. He's an amazing visionary and a, and a brilliant world-class tattooer. So he's going to make sure that you're healing your tattoos the best as possible. You really want to protect your art. Uh, d -Lies Pro, otherwise known as Dermalize Globally. ReinventingTheTattoo.com, an online subscription that is required reading for tattooers and apprentices. It started off as a three-ring binder that was updated by a guy regularly when he sent out extra chapters, turned into this massive, basically a college textbook of tattooing, and now as an online subscription, it has extra guest chapters from amazing world-class artists, as well as just new tattoos that are happening so he could explain some of the processes of what's happening out in the current landscape of tattooing. If you haven't read this, then rest assured there are thousands of tattooers that are critiquing your work as if they had. LooseScrewTattoo.com is looking for residents and guest artists. Jesse Smith runs a really tight ship. He's amazing. He works really hard for his artists. And I believe that some of these positions even include, for tattooers, medical, dental, and benefits. So if this is something that interests you, TattooNow.com slash LooseScrew, and you can apply for a residency or a guest spot. Let them know that Gabe from Tattoo Now sent you. The Bucharest Tattoo Convention, it's happening every November. If you miss it this year, do not miss it next. TattooConvention.ro. Costi runs an amazing show and so many tattooers are saying great things about it. I am wicked excited to land there myself. And of course, Tattoo Now. Since the mid nineties, we've been helping tattoo artists, studios, suppliers, and events reach their audiences via multimedia promotion and website production. Uh, videos, webinars, all sorts of creative ways to help you reach your audience and, and to be able to smash your goals. So, if you want to put our decades of experience to work for you, management at tattoonow.com or 413-585-9134. Cheers, bro. Perfect. Cheers, Bob. Nice to uh, catch up again. So, uh, how's, uh, it's been a while. How's 2019 treated you so far? Uh, it's been good, man. Um, kind of the usual, like every other year. Kind of do the oh, same yeah. thing every year. That's you know? what my daughter says when I pick her up from school every day. I'm like, how you, how was your day? She's like, good, like every day. Tell us yeah. about it. What'd you do? Where'd you go? <laughs> right? Same thing every day, pretty much. You yeah, know, it was, it was a good day. But so, where have you been? I guess might be a better question. I, you know, I have an apartment in in Hollywood now, and then you know, my house is here in Detroit, right. so I go back and forth. So awesome. Uh, I know, and I've been. You know, out in L.A. a lot. It's been more in the wintertime there, so I'm usually there, you know, January, February, uh, half of March, you know. And um, But I'm back and forth, you know. Um, sure. I'm, I'm you... home almost every – I'm back in Detroit almost every month, so. Awesome. And uh, so obviously you're tattooing in both spots. Do you have uh, private studios in, in both locations? Are you working at any uh, uh, any studio studios? Or? In L.A. I have a little private studio, but I also work at, um, at like, three other shops. I kind of, like, go to, you know – 
kind of do guest spots, but kind of working there, you know, on a regular basis when I'm out there, you know. So um, I was working at Shamrock Social oh, yeah. Club, Mark Mahoney's shop. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a mile from my apartment, you know, and I was working there on Tuesdays. And uh, I haven't been back in a while, but this winter I want to try to get back there and, and just, you know, work every once in a while there. Uh, I was working at Big Gus's shop. Ah, uh, fuck uh, yeah. Collective Ink Gallery. So I want to get out there and work uh, maybe one day a week or so when I'm out there or, or a couple days a week or something. And then Nico Rotato has a second shop. Bam. Black Anchor LA, which is like a mile and a half from my apartment. So um, I've been working there every once in a while, too. So I'm just kind of kind of bouncing around, working with friends. I just worked oh, yeah. at ST Tattoo in Venice. My buddy Jason Brown owns awesome. that shop. So, I, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pre- in LA, I'm pretty much bouncing around. Awesome. Now, you, uh, are, you, are you driving back and forth? It sounds like every once in a while I catch you and you're on a road trip. Yeah, well, I usually – um, I, I spend almost my entire summer in Detroit, you know, like – when I was back this summer for an entire four months, I hadn't been back to LA except for one week in August. So I like to be in Detroit for the summer. So, and I like having my Camaro in Detroit. Mm. Um, but in the winter time, like before I had my apartment out there and um, I used to keep my Camaro in the garage from like, you know, late November till, you know, almost April, you know, and it just sure. sits in the garage. Cause I got a truck I drive in the winter and stuff. But uh, but now that I have the apartment out there, I can drive the Camaro year round there. It's like summertime year round. So I uh, use last few years I've been like September. I might drive my Camaro back out there and then leave it out there. And then in May I'll drive it back to Detroit so I can uh, have it here for the summer. And and I uh, and I like the road trip. You know, I like driving across the country. So uh, I love it actually. So it's uh, fun. I I agree. I just got out to a uh, Chicago area to do an event with Guy and uh, and, a, and a crew of people that were badass. And it was like a twenty-ish hour solo uh, drive. I got to stop. You know, I stop off and see tattoo shops on the way. But uh, so do you do the whole trip solo? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love driving alone. Yeah. How long does it take you? Out of curiosity. It's uh, it's three days. It's like the shortest route, which I just drove back out last month, um, going up north, like through Colorado and stuff. Um, it's 33 hours and I actually did the drive in almost two days. Like I, um, I've done it in three days or like if I have time, I'll do it in four days so I can take my time and just do like eight hour drives instead of 12 hour drives, you know, but this time I drove and ghosts were playing in, uh, north of Denver, like right on my way, you know, like half, halfway to LA, um they were playing and it's right the exact time i was driving through there worked out perfect oh, so beautiful How but i ended up i was gonna stop I, I started driving i left like a saturday night at six o'clock and i was gonna stop get a hotel at two in the morning and then get up and then drive the you know to where i was going on sunday but i uh i kept driving and i got to a point where it's like it's it stupid to get a hotel room i'm like you know five hours away i'm just gonna keep driving and i stopped at a rest stop for a couple hours and kind of nodded out a little bit and, and then when i did the same thing when i then I was in, like, I got to Loveland, Colorado, where I was going to see Ghost. Um, I got there Sunday, and then uh, they were playing Monday night, so I had a whole day off there just chilling, you know. Nice. And um, So Tuesday, I left there to drive to Hollywood, which was about 17 hours. So I was going to stop along the way. And then same thing, I kept driving, and it's like, <laughs> well, fuck, you know, it says, my GPS says I'll get there at, 2 15 a.m and i'm usually up till four or five in the morning anyway so, so it's why like not keep going drive through and i could drive into la at night when there's no traffic if i drove in the next day i'm gonna get stuck in traffic you know and it's so that so i had basically drove to la in two days which <laughs> awesome. i've never done before and I'll probably never uh, do again yeah yeah no i'm uh, i'm wicked down i love those uh those long trips i'm 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 a little envious, but uh, I'm not because i get to take them too so uh yeah. you're also you're also hitting up a, a ton of tattoo conventions well, conventions um, well, for me not like i mean i've been doing conventions hardcore like you know it, i was doing like 15 to 18 a year for probably 15 16 17 years and uh i've been doing them for let's see i've been tattooing 22 years and i started doing conventions after three years so so i've been doing conventions for 19 years now and uh just to, actually this year i think i'm only doing seven or possibly mm-hmm. eight, which is, you know, not very many for me. I think yet last year I did at least 12. And before then it was 12 to 15. And I was gradually slowing down a tiny bit, you know, but I've been saying for the last 
eight years that didn't want to slow down on the convention circuit, you know. So um, it's just I'm pretty burned out on them. It gets harder to work, you know. You know so many people, and you're talking to so many people, and you're trying to tattoo, and you're just talking one person after another the entire day, and there's so many distractions. Like, I have a hard time tattooing. And then I end up tattooing late, and everybody else is out having dinner at the the bar. (laughs) I'm working till 4 in the morning, you know, if they let me stay in the convention floor right um and it's just i don't know it's just becoming less fun like when i'm actually tattooing if, if i don't have to tattoo or just go there and hang out and talk to people all day like like if i do a seminar or something i'm just doing that i'm not tattooing that day so so it's cool i do the seminar that i can just go and hang out and talk to sure. people and it's a blast you know and but oh, these yeah. days i always say the only reason i do conventions is to to see my friends and stuff and, sure. and see my friends and only see at conventions you know, and, uh, and it's and just pretty amazing how that, uh, fun. it's awesome that family that kind of travels around and, uh, catches up with each other. Exactly. Um, you know, speaking some of, of a... my best friends who I never see, you know, sure. so it's cool. Uh, but for an artist just starting out doing conventions, um, it's ex- exciting, you know, and, uh, you know, you go and you, you know, you want to work, you know, is the, the goal, go there and work and, and meet new artists, you know, and hang out and have fun. And, uh, and it's, and you get to travel and see different cities and, um, I used to love conventions for years, you know, loved them. And I just, I just did so many for so long. I got a little burned out. Uh, well, you're talking um, about hundreds just, and hundreds, right? <laughs> pardon? You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of conventions over years, yeah. over these years. It's, yeah, uh, uh, totally. So. so speaking of, uh, so I'm excited to catch up with you in person over in, uh, in Bucharest for the 10th annual convention uh, that Costi's putting on. Uh, so how, how did that come about? Do, do you know Costi or is this a new adventure no, for I you? Just, I, I just met Costi in Germany in June. Um, I went to Andy Engel's big shop reopening party. Ah, that looked awesome. Costi was there. Yeah, that was a blast, man. Uh, cool. cool. So, uh, well, I'm excited to uh, to catch up there. And uh, Robert Hernandez will be there. It's the first time that I think I'll be able to like really catch up with uh, with his portfolio in person. Uh, it's amazing. After all these years, I still haven't really uh, made that connection. But you, you guys have been friends forever. You mind telling us a little bit about uh, about Robert and maybe when you first yeah. met him or. You know, the first time I met Robert was, I think it was at Paul Boos, um, the first Massachusetts oh, yeah, yeah, tattoo yeah. festival. I remember those. And uh, that was 2001, mm-hmm. 2001. And uh, that's the first time I met Robert. And we were all, like, there's so many of us, like, you know, American tattooers that knew of Robert, but we hadn't met him and stuff, you know. And, um, and we'd all seen his work and then, you know, meeting him there looking through his whole portfolio and stuff and every, he was like the talk of the convention, you know, everyone's like, yeah. Holy shit. Did you see Robert Hernandez's work? You know? And we're all like, Holy yeah. Wow, man. He was and at that time. He was doing all these like Gene Simmons from kiss. He, he did like a handful of portraits of him color, you know, with blood dripping out of his mouth when he spits blood. And, uh, and he did, I remember he had a lot of Marilyn Manson portraits too at that time. And, um, we were all tripping on the Gene Simmons portraits look so real and in color. And, but he's more pretty much, he's all black and gray pretty much. You know, he'll throw in little hints of color every once in a while. But, uh, he did a little bit more back then, but anyway, we, you know, I met him and stuff. And then I saw him at, um, at Paul Boos tattoo, the, the earth convention in Oakland, California, uh, in 2002 and Paul did three shows that year and uh, I don't know how he did it I think it almost probably killed him you know? yeah that was crazy they, they were huge shows so Ch- you know? Chicago too I remember going to the Worcester one yeah, and, uh, yeah. the Tattoo of the Earth was Chicago and Oakland mm-hmm. California and then um and he did the Massachusetts the second Massachusetts show that was all in 2002 mm-hmm. so he did three shows that year but then I, I got to know Robert a little more that year at, at those conventions Robert was at all three of those and um and uh, just super nice guy, you know, and, oh. and he's just a, a great guy, you know. So we just became friends, you know. And, and then he tattooed me. He came to Detroit maybe the next year or a couple of years after that. Came to Detroit for the first time. And that's when I got my first tattoo from him. And oh, yeah. now I have like six really cool yeah. big pieces from Robert. Nice. You know, I remember uh, uh, back in that time you did uh, uh, an ear on Tom Strom's neck. Do you remember that one at all? Or Yeah. Uh, <laughs> an so ear sick. below his ear. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. two years. Yeah, that, yeah that was awesome. Sorry to interrupt, but we do need to show a sponsored video. They indeed make this show possible. In the meantime, if you want to let us know in the comments if you've seen Bob at a show or have a great cross-country story to tell, 
Um, yeah, like I said, let us know in the comments. We'd love hearing from you. And when we come back, we, Bob is going to tell us about some of his influences, including Rick Baker, what it's like jamming out on stage with some of his musical heroes, as well as his upcoming worldwide uh, tour schedule. So thanks again for watching, and we will catch up with you after this short video. Protect your art. 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 But speaking so back to Europe or thinking of Europe, you know, what kind of uh, so so where have you been throughout Europe and what do you uh, what do you get out of these trips? Uh, well, I love traveling, you know, and I love seeing, you know, different parts of the world. So, and I've been, over the years, I've been almost everywhere, you know, I mean, China, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, um, and then Australia, South Africa, and then all over Europe, you know, like everywhere in Europe. So, but I haven't been to Romania yet, and I've been wanting to go. And then I just met Kosti at Andy Engel's shop opening party in June, and uh, I met cast you for the first time and a uh, coolest fucking dude ever you know and we we were there for almost a week just you know drinking and, and just having a great time he's you know he's a jack daniels guy he showed me his have you seen his collection of specialty jack daniels bottles yeah i've seen a little bit of it earlier <laughs> i was skyping in with him when we were trying to get on this call and uh his backdrop was like this whole wall of liquor and uh i was both uh impressed i was uh eager to see it in person and then i was thinking of all the headaches that it contained <laughs> <laughs> lots of hangovers on that wall yeah for oh. sure um, but he was um yeah just the coolest guy and um you know we like a lot of the same music and stuff and we just we had a blast for that that whole awesome. week so he asked me to come to the convention you know and um and so it's like fuck i would love to come i've never been to romania okay. and uh it's on halloween time you know it's and He's going to take us to Dracula's castle, right? Uh, so go, so right? excited. Yeah, I'm going on the field trips. Wicked excited. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, the venue camp. itself looks amazing. Bucharest is obviously just an old, old city and, and lots of, uh, you know, uh, nuanced art. Like, it's just art and architecture everywhere. And uh, that, that venue, I've seen the pictures. It's uh, very, can't wait to get over there and check it out. And, uh, and again, it's a, a great time to catch up with people. <laughs> Most, I haven't yeah. been in Europe in like two or three years, so uh, you know, eagerly anticipating. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I, I haven't, um, oh, I was in Germany yeah, in this summer, but before that, I, I hadn't been to Europe in maybe a couple of years, and I used to go oh. at least twice a year, maybe three times a year, so, but I've kind of cut back on those long, those uh, international trips are just sure. pretty tiring, you know, and I'm just, I'm just burned out, I'm a little bit on, you know, all traveling, but I'm still doing it, but, uh, yeah, no, but I have cut back these I'm sorry? It's pretty tired. So I was just going to say, yeah, it gets pretty tiring, no doubt, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I hate to complain a, about traveling. I was going to say, it's tough work, but someone's got to do it. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm lucky to be able to do it, so I shouldn't be complaining. So I'm not I mean, complaining. It, right, right. Please keep the invitations coming. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed on your Instagram you had a, a the what was it a the, the Rick Baker double double book uh, the monster yeah. guy. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about some of the original art influences and some of the monster influences and? Yeah, well, I mean Rick Baker's a uh, you know a special effects makeup artist you know and he um you know he sculpts you know and he just makes monsters he paints monsters he uh and does all any kind of practical effects and everything you know but his book but he's a you know first and foremost he's just an amazing artist you know and he right. painter and everything but he's he's the guy who did the american world from london mm -hmm. all that makeup he created that wolf he created uh he did a you know king kong from the 76 remake and um gremlins is, is him um oh, and you can name a zillion movies um jack nicholson remember the movie wolf with jack nicholson yeah, yeah, he yeah did of course that did all that makeup uh, uh men in black you know just a these books are like a who's who incredible yeah. it's like 500 pages it's two books two thick hardcover books that are probably 250 pages of, you know each 
and uh, it comes to the big slipcase, the two books, and it weighs 17 pounds. <laughs> I read on his Instagram. It's awesome. heavy, you oh, know, yeah. and uh, I, I couldn't wait for it to get it, you know, and it was the release date was Tuesday, so I just got it on Tuesday. I pre ordered it, and um, it's, I mean, I just yesterday and today, I've been going through it all day today. I've been, I had today off, and I was just going through the book, and oh my god, you know, I want to tattoo this, I want to tattoo uh, that. There's like a encyclopedia of cool monster images to tattoo so anybody who wants a rick baker monster from me i'm i have a rick baker discount so awesome sweet and so speaking to that uh um, are you still taking on new clients or what's the best way for uh, people to to get tattooed by you yeah you know i don't book very far ahead because of traveling and i'm going back and mm-hmm. forth to la and stuff and i try to keep it at two months, you know, it kind of like every month I may start booking for like the following month, you know, awesome. so I keep it, it's kind of loose and I'm trying to book like a whole two months ahead, like October right now. I, I want to be booking for December just to give people sure. time to, uh, you know, if they're traveling, they got to make travel plans and flights and that kind of thing. Sure. Um, but for, for local people, it's a lot easier. Awesome. But, uh, so but right now it's. Yeah. And do you I'm check sorry. your emails? Is, do you check your emails? What's the best way for people to contact you? Yeah, by email for sure. You can email me from my website, bobtyrell.com. And um, and then my email address is bob at bobtyrell.com. Awesome. Um, but my website, powered by tattoonow.com. Yeah. Um, you can exactly. email it directly there. You can... Yeah. Have you, um, you, want to, uh, you want to tell people about some of the other upcoming conventions and then. Uh... Well, I mean, we've got the Mayan Mayhem Convention in Cancun, Mexico. It's December 5th to the 10th. So I'll be there. And and... Have you done that one before? Yeah, this is the second one. Awesome. So I did the first one last year. And, and... last year he had, um, I know, um, um, uh, Sublime with Rome. Oh, yeah. Play. They, they were the, the only band I really knew of, mm. and uh, which they're great, you know. But this year he's got a, a lot more bands, and it's a little more uh, – like hard rock and heavy metal. Okay. So he's got Flotsam and Jetsam okay. from Arizona, thrash metal band, been around since like 1986. Oh, you know? Awesome. Um, the first so it's like a, it's, a music tattoo art kind of a, yeah. a crazy party? Or? Yep. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a music slash tattoo show, you know, kind of an equal amount of both. Right. So the music's going to be outside on the big stage on the beach, which is pretty amazing. Awesome. Uh, I imagine a lot of yeah. tattoo collectors kind of land there. Or... Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of making a vacation, you know, and tattoo collectors go and they can go to Cancun and get tattooed and kind of kill two birds with one stone. You know, if there's an artist there that they want to get tattooed by, Sounds instead of traveling beautiful. to where the artist lives, they can go to Cancun and make a vacation out of it. Yeah. You just can't swim and get a stay out of the sun after you get tattooed, but that's the only right. drawback of being in a on that kind of vacation, you know, right? but, right. Uh, but it was cool. Last year it was a blast. It's in, it's in an all inclusive resort. So it's, uh, you know, awesome. it's a party. Perfect. Um, and then, uh, and then you're back to Germany. Is that where, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. January. I'm going to Randy Engelhard's, uh, convention in Zwickau, Germany. So he does it every awesome. other year. Um, so I went two years ago was his 10th anniversary. So this would be the 11th year, but, uh, it's a great convention. It's not super big, you know, so it's, it's got that feel of like the older conventions where they're not too big. I love that. And, um, you know, it's just, the environment's really cool. It's a cool spot, you know, fucking killer lineups, you know, the the tattoo lineup is always amazing. Oh yeah. It's, it's nothing, but you know, it's not a zillion artists. It's, there's not like, 200 booths there like some of these conventions you know it's smaller sure. but all amazing artists oh. you know. all hand-picked and then uh then we're then to canada yeah after that january i'm just trying to not do more than eight conventions next year i want to do six would be my ultimate goal but it might mm-hmm. be seven or eight but uh so january germany february i'm going to winnipeg that was i went last year for the first time it's called the winnipeg tattoo show mm. Uh, it's the third weekend of February, and um, that was one of the best conventions I ever went to, man. It was uh, amazing. Here. amazing. It's cold as fuck, you know, and I don't <laughs> want to be in Winnipeg in February, you know. And that's kind of why I didn't go, like, the year before. I was talking to um, to Abby, you know, one of the organizers, and um, I'm like, man, 
I'd rather go to Winnipeg in July. July, you know, to sure. Do but I, but I went, and I'm glad I did, and, and I can't wait to go again. So that might be one I'll do every year. So I got that February. Got Detroit the first week of March every year. I haven't missed a Detroit show. This is the 25th anniversary this year. So awesome. Detroit's one of the best in the world. Uh, this year's Great. 25th. I, I got to. Uh, I should get my ass out. I love. Yeah. Uh, I do love that show. It's been a couple of years since I've been out to it. You should come out, man. You should I, come you out know, to the 25th. I, you know, I might be in a position to be able to this year. The, uh, the obviously my travel has been a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit wonky for the last year, but uh, I'm excited for for the future because uh, everything's kind of coming back together, and that's an easy cool. drive, as you as you know. For me, I'm like, oh, I could I could do ten hours in the car there and back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing I always notice in your feet is uh, music is is clearly part of who you are as a person, uh, and part of you know your art and the spirit. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about how that uh, you know how how you come to love music so much and, and how that affects your tattoos or any of the crossover between the worlds? Um, I mean, music I've been into my, my whole life and I started playing guitar when I was 14. So I, um, that's when I kind of gave up art. Like my dad's an artist, you know, and um, I wanted to be an artist when I grew up and then guitar took over and I played bands, you know, all, all through high school. And, um, and then, you know, after I graduated, I had a day job making kitchen countertops and I played in bands like all through the eighties. I mean, really from 78 until about 1995, I played in bands and the eighties were the right. biggest point where we were really trying to fucking do something, you know, trying to get uh -huh. somewhere. And we all wanted to try to make it play music, which is really hard oh, to do. Yeah. But, uh, but we had a blast in Detroit. It was like, I mean, the eighties, you know, when eighties metal scenes was crazy and that affected the entire world, you know? So LA sure. was like, out of control but uh detroit had a huge metal scene as well like every big city and uh wow. it was rocking back then it's, it's not like that now you know but the 80s were crazy and uh had a great time you know but um you know the, our band kind of fizzled out the last band i was in and uh and that's when i started getting tattooed um mm -hmm. anyway i started tattooing and almost quit playing guitar for like 10 years and pick it up i went from playing every day to maybe twice a month but I've, in the last 10 years, I've gotten back into it. In the last maybe 15 years, actually. And, um, <clears throat> so now I'm trying to play, you know, more, you know, like like more than I had been, which was almost never. But uh, I still don't play enough. But uh, but I've got yeah. to I've got to play with some amazing musicians just because of tattooing. You know, like I um, you know, I've met a lot of bands through tattooing, and then I like with Exodus, I met those guys, and I ended up tattooing rob dukes when he was in the band he was a vocalist and uh gary holt you know um guitarist for exodus he's in slayer now you know oh, but he's still yeah. with exodus and he's been with slayer since 2010 you know so but um uh -huh. they're on their final tour and their the last show was at the forum in la on november 30th and then they're done so i'm sure he'll be back with exodus after that but um right, but i right. used to ride on tour with exodus i went out like I think on three different tours, like for like a week or ten days, and oh, yeah. tattooing or uh, yeah, I just went to hang out and I brought my tattoo stuff because I was going to tattoo Rob, and then huh. on that tour, that one particular tour, I was out with them. I was supposed to tattoo Rob, the singer, and I ended up tattooing Gary, doing his first tattoo. It, oh, he was yeah. forty six years old, got his first tattoo, awesome. and I didn't even get around to tattooing Rob. It was uh, it's just nutty, man. We're drinking and all that, Rocker. yeah, yeah right. but uh. So Gary got hooked. He um, did his first tattoo, and he was like, you know how it is with people. You get bit by that tattoo bug. He yeah. got bit harder than almost anyone I know, and he's sleeved out now. And oh, I've done so a bunch of work on him. And, you know, I'm, nice. I'm actually I'm tattooing him after that last show. He's sticking around L.A. for oh, a LA. couple of days. So I'm going to tattoo him. It's been a few years, actually. But anyway, they, um, I had my guitar with me that first time I rolled with him. They let me get, play, get on stage and play a song with him. Uh, yeah. two nights in a row on that tour. And then I went out with them again, like a year later, and they let me get up and play three three nights in a row. Fuck yeah. And, uh, and then I played <laughs> one more time. I was, the last one, um, I played with them in Tampa, Florida. That's the last time I played with them. But let me just get up and play a song, you know, and it's just like so a, awesome. a dream come true. I mean, I've been a fan of those guys since the 80s. And yeah, just yeah. to get to know them, become friends with them, and actually jam with them was like a just a surreal, you know. <laughs> and then I've now I've I know Rita Dimebag, Daryl's girlfriend. 
you know, from Pantera. Oh, wow. uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I became friends with her, you know, and she lives out in L.A. Um, she has a house in Dallas still, but she also lives in Hollywood, like a half mile from me. Oh, sure. But I'll see her at the Rainbow and stuff. But I've got to know her over the years. And um, and then she asked me to play the Dime Bash thing she throws every year around the NAM convention. And uh-huh. So I did the last two, man. And uh, got to play with guys from King's X and oh, yeah. Type of Negative, you know, oh, and Armored sure. Saint. And, uh-huh. uh, it's a surreal, bro. It's a dream come true. <laughs> oh, I bet. Sounds like, thank you, tattooing. Thank you, music. Thank you, art. Thank you, people. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's uh, pretty amazing. But I, just, uh, I like to get out and play every once in a while. You know, I just sat in with my friends Iron Maiden tribute band uh, last Saturday. Nice. And I uh, played like three songs with them. And then uh, there was a Judas Priest tribute band playing with them, and I played one song with them. They're all they're all friends, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, fun. Well, it's amazing, too, uh, like I said, to catch the story on the Instagram feeds. And uh, it's oh, always yeah, inspiring. Yeah. You're, you know, obviously, um, or maybe not obviously, but just so you know, or as you know, sorry. <clears throat> as you know uh, you're an amazing uh, influence on uh, on the other tattooers in the tattoo world and um there are very few tattooers that are as well known as you that uh i haven't heard people talk shit about like uh, i think you're almost squeaky clean i don't know if i've ever heard anybody say a bad word about you so uh whatever it is that you're doing man it's fucking <laughs> amazing and it's inspiring and and, and keep it up because uh, people shouldn't be learning from you oh thanks man appreciate that dude of course um, so, uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, thanks again for, for taking the time and, um, I look forward to catching up on the other side of the pond. Yeah. I can't wait, man. We're going to have a blast in Romania. So can't wait awesome. to hang with you, bro. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Too Cheers. Long. We'll, uh, we'll catch Definitely. up soon. Cheers, brother. It's great talking to you, man. Bam. There we go. Nice short interview with Bob Tyrell. I'm ecstatic to be packing up my gear and heading over there and we'll be breaking it out. Maybe as we go after that wall of Jack Daniels. Please let us know down below uh, who you'd like us to see, what conventions you'd like to see us at. And uh, yeah, again, check out our sponsors, D-Lies Pro, otherwise known as Dermalize, Reinventing the Tattoo, Loose Screw Tattoo, Bucharest Tattoo Convention, and Tattoo Now. We would love to have you on as an advertiser or a sponsor, so get in touch. Management at TattooNow.com, 413-585-9134. And uh, yeah, if you see me on the road, say hi. Down for a tasty beverage, safety meeting, cup of tea, coffee. Let's just talk tattoos and shit.